today I'm at Croft. It's the 26th of April, 2022, and it's quite sunny, a little bit of cloud, but dry. It's only eight degrees, but it's supposed to get warm later, and I don't think it's gonna rain. Croft is in the north of England. It's about an hour south of Newcastle in North, North Yorkshire. It's about as north as you can get in Yorkshire before you're in Durham. It's in a place called Dalton on Tees. It was originally an RAF, base for bombers during the Second World War and after that it was a private airfield but that didn't last long and by the late 1940s people were using it for racing but in 1964 it was made into a proper race circuit and it was used for many years up until the early 80s where it fell into disrepair and was only really good for rallycross but in 1997 it was refurbished it was extended and it was made into what we have today a 2.1 mile circuit with 12 bends the current lap record is held by a Sergio Perez. You may have heard of him. He races in Formula One. He did a 1 minute 13.656 in a British F3 car back in 2008. I don't think I'm going to be getting close to that today. I'm driving a 2020 Mazda MX-5. It's the 2 litre model with 181 brake horsepower and 151 pound feet of torque it has a limited slip differential and it's completely standard apart from some rodison high temperature brake pads i fitted and some high temperature brake fluid it's got michelin pilot sport fours currently on there haven't tried them on track yet so it'll be interesting to see how it does I'm currently queuing up for noise testing and then I'm going to do my sighting laps. I'm going to drive around for a little bit, get used to the circuit. Then I'm going to talk you through a lap and then I'm going to try and show you a quick lap. Hopefully I get a relatively quick lap in, although it is a road car. I have got an ordinary seatbelt here and um, no roll cage, so I don't push it all the way and I've got to drive this home. I'm currently five and a half hours away from home. Bit of a trek for me. So yeah, this car is going to finish this track day in one piece that is my priority i've done a few laps now so i'm going to talk you through one hopefully you can hear me i'm going to do a little warm up here and then i'll tell you what i'm doing so here's one lap. I'll put the names of the corners on the screen. This is the start and finish straight. Here we go. After these cones, braking hard in a straight line. Down to third, gonna cut the apex, looking at the exit of the corner already. Gonna go over the apex here, braking, and holding the steering wheel steady now, not adding steering, not taking it off, just gradually increasing power, now taking the steering off, backing off the power, going to cut one apex, cut the other, power onto the exit apex, and now it's time of, question of waiting, until I need to brake, it's just after this bend, now braking hard, I can't brake as hard as I want to with these brakes, they're not as good as I'm used to, pulling off the brake now, Getting to the inside of the corner, clipping the apex there, powering on out to the outside apex. And here I'm going to go up to fourth gear now and try and maintain this speed, about 80, 85 miles an hour, clipping that apex. And now I can increase power to the exit apex here. I'm back off the power now, just as I come into his corner here, I'm going to start braking down into third. Clip this apex here, one steering movement, not doing much with the steering, holding it steady, adding power, a little bit of straightening there with the steering, a little bit of brakes and catching the car in front, and now I let it drift over to the outside of the corner. Wasn't the perfect line there. Braking in a straight line, down into third, trying to get this apex on the inside here, holding it in, holding it in. Braking now in a straight line, down into second gear, turning it in, holding the steering wheel steady, using the gas to change the angle of the car. Left foot brake into this one, peel off the brake and turn in, and then power on out, and if you want, have a little bit of a skid. Now the start and finish straight again, waiting to brake for the next corner. Braking. 
third gear. Clip the first apex, aim for the exit apex. Brake on the exit apex. Clip the first apex, hold the steering wheel steady. Add power gradually. Back off the power a little bit here. Click both these apexes and power on to the exit apex. Full power now, do not go off the circuit. Up to fourth gear. Drifting over to the left side gradually. And brake at the 150 marker with these brake pads. Down into third gear, peeling off the brake. Into the apex on the inside, powering to the exit apex. Got a faster car behind me now. A Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 5, I'll let him pass. There you go. Now try and hold this speed through here, power on through this corner, right the way to the apex on the exit. Backing off the power now, a little bit of brakes, we've got a little bit quick here. And gradually increasing the brake now, very gradually, down to third, gradually peeling off the brake, going to the inside, onto the outside, holding the steering wheel steady, not really changing the steering much. Going onto full power now for the exit, onto the exit apex. Fourth gear, braking in a straight line, down into third, peeling off the brakes, getting the inside apex, holding it steady, holding it, holding it, holding it, and now brake in a straight line, down into second gear, and I use the gas pedal to change the angle of the car. Brake in a straight line with the left foot, peel off the brakes, get the nose into the apex, and power on out, a little bit too much power, and you will do a little bit of a slide. That was two laps, I said one lap, but I was kind of in a roll, so I thought I'd just carry on. Just finished lunch now, and it has started to rain. The weather forecast isn't looking particularly great. So I think I'll leave it with the two laps that I've just talked you through. I don't think I'm gonna get a faster lap in. So what do I think about Croft? Well, I do like it. It has some technical bits for the more experienced driver, but it's not too long for the less experienced driver. So you've got time to learn it. You don't need to be here day after day after day to be starting to get a decent time. I'm already starting to get the hang of it after half a day. There isn't a lot of runoff, so it's not the safest of circuits, but it is quite a clean circuit I've found. So I'm not getting too much in the way of things being kicked up in front of me that could damage the car, although I did get a stone crack my window on the way here. In fact, most of the stone chips I get seem to be on the road, not on track days. Who would have thought? My favorite part of the circuit are the S's and sunny in and sunny out. It's a very fast part of the circuit, not in terms of numbers. I think I'm doing somewhere between 80 and 90 through there, but you feel like you're going really fast as you get near the tires on the left, near the tires on the right, and then sunny in and sunny out, you try to do as one big turn. Some of the curbs are okay, the apex, smooth, others are a little bit harsh. So you wanna pick and choose which curbs you hit. I'll put the cost of the track day on screen now, once I've worked out how much it's cost me. Doesn't look like I'm getting much in the way of tire wear here. The brakes I've got at the moment, I'm not too pleased with. I was using Ferrodo DS2500, which were okay. They were definitely good enough for the track, nothing particularly special. But these Rodison pads I have, are really quite good on road, but they're a little bit out of their depth on the track. I can't brake as hard as I'm used to being able to brake. I'm braking, and then braking harder, but it's not stopping any harder, which is a little bit worrying, and I'm having to readjust how early I need to start braking when trying to slow this car down. However, I can't really complain because the Frodo DS2500 pads are about 330 pounds for a set, and the Rodison pads cost me around about 200 pounds for a complete set. So they were significantly cheaper. And for their price, I am impressed because you can do a track day with them. You can enjoy a track day with them. But if you're used to being able to brake hard and late, maybe start braking a little bit earlier if you're using these pads. Having said that about the weather, it did actually clear up. So here's a quick lap, or at least a quick lap for me.
bear in mind that I'm not a seasoned racing driver, nor am I a track driving instructor. I haven't actually received any track driving tuition myself. I just like driving around race circuits. I've been doing track days since the end of 2014 in one, two, three, four, five, I think five different cars, usually lightweight. And I tend to have a bit more fun in lower powered cars actually because I prefer to drive a lower power car as hard as I can and get more out of it than a higher powered car which is even more capable than I am. This car is still more capable than I am. And that's what I'm saying at the moment. There are other people that can get this car around this circuit quicker than me and the lines that I showed you may not be the best, but they're working for me and they're safe. And that's my primary goal because I wanna do another track day. Also, I'm enjoying the lower costs of this car, 17.5 UK miles to the gallon going around here. Although at the moment, fuel prices are so high. <laughs> still relatively expensive. 75 track miles is working out about 35 pounds worth of fuel. But the tyres last ages, I had uh, factory fit Bridgestone S001 tyres that lasted seven track days, about a thousand miles on track. Um, they did 12,000 road miles and I finished them off doing half an hour of drifting and donuts just to say goodbye. But the fact this car is costing me less to do each day means I can do more and it's reliable. I don't have to fix it. But obviously the downside is it's a relatively expensive car. Well, at least it is for me. It's about 30,000 pounds. So it's a bit of a risk. That's why I don't want to crash it. However, it's more reliable, so it's costing me less. But the risk is if I lose the car, I'm losing a lot more money than my other cars, which were all under 15,000 pounds. I think one of them was like 3,000 pounds, the first one I took on track. Anyway, I hope this video introduces you to Croft and lets you know the layout. If you think it does, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to get my future videos. And until the next one, cheerio.